minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, get high, rapper. Man, now you already know it's live, it's raw, it's going down. Like this. I'm going around and letting everybody know that they welcome to the show. Yep. It's the littest thing you've ever seen, you already know. Let me introduce you to your host of the hour. It be Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike. Yeah, it's the man hour. Yep. Got the hottest plays, uh, all the breaking news. Yeah. Every rumor, every trade, every breaking bruise. Mm -hmm. Tighten up the screws. Yeah, it's going down. Have you saying what the fuck? What? I never watered down. Woo. It's going down. I'll be rolling up. Yep. And if you buy it or you sell it, then you made the cut. Watch you flip it back. I can double up. I got some rocks for that ass. I'ma burn it up. Gotta check the rules. but know that it be fair and foul. Rep throw the whistle. Coach throw the towel. We can do this on the field, on side of the lines. It's the man now we know. Now we going live. And what is up, everybody? Michael Buckash are here with the Mike and Mike Man Hour live, raw, and uncut sports talk coming up to you on the Friday edition on the All Access Sports Network Noon Edition. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. We are live on YouTube every Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. East Coast time. That's 12 p.m. Central time. Also on our Facebook page at the same time as well. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe as well. It would be much, much appreciated if you guys would uh, help us get over that 500 like mark on Facebook page and get us monetized on Facebook. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this with a couple friends as well. Also, we had the Mike and Mike Man Hour website mike and mike man hour.com guys we have t-shirts we have these beautiful hats right there you guys can see that hat right there boom mike and mike man hour hat t-shirts hoodies stickers and coffee mugs as well uh so guys if you uh would be most most inclined there to go ahead and support us over there on the mike and mike man hour like sloppy seconds did just uh, a couple weeks ago here he gave us a five five dollar tip and uh we couldn't be much more happy about that so thank you very very much guys uh i, I would like you guys just to buy something honestly i think uh you know you like you get a little t-shirt you get a hat i mean you can wear it wherever you want the hoodie i mean the hoodies are freaking awesome so guys mike and mike manor.com check that stuff stuff out but we got a action packed show for you guys today we are picking week one NFL or sorry week three NFL games wow it is already week three in the NFL season and if you missed a game last night the Miami Dolphins did beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 31 to 13 Garner Minshew threw for 275 yards Miles Gaskin rushed for 66 six yards and James Robinson was the leading receiver for 83 yards on the night wow the when you look at back at this Thursday night game here, it was <laughs> the hype around the game was not the actual game itself. It was the battle of the facial hair. It was the beard versus the mustache. It was like, who had the better face facial hair? Who had the better look? And they were going back on forth like, no, if you have a beard, you have something to hide. If you, uh, it was, it, it was, it was so freaking asinite and, that brings me to the topic of the day is, did we witness just probably the worst two starting quarterbacks in the NFL to play last night? I mean, you had Garner Mitchu, which was a six-round draft, draft, draft pick. Yes, people are saying, all hail the jock trash scream, yada, yada, yada. I, 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 I'm going to call out a show. Dylan from on and off the field. This guy's a huge fan of him. He, he, he wants to ride his nuts all the way to the bank day in and day out. And, when you only throw for 275 yards in a 13 point, or like in a loss, you only score 13 points. How are you this great freaking quarterback, right? I mean, hell, Ryan Ryan Fitzpatrick only threw 160 yards for or for two for two touchdowns. So, I mean, I think Thursday night, guys, we witnessed we witnessed the two worst quarterbacks in all of NFL 
last night. Uh, st- uh, not all of NFL, but starting wise as the NFL. What is up, Jameson? What is up? What is up? What is up, man? Like as you know, Jameson, we've been gone uh, for the last couple days. I-, I I had a funeral to attend uh, both Wednesday and Thursday, so it was it, it was it was very. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It was it was it, it, it just it was very very exhausting. I I did take the day off from work as like as well to catch to catch to catch to catch my bearings, and honestly, Cindy was sleeping until what ten or eleven thirty this morning. And I mean, it was it was definitely much needed. But guys, we are we, we are back. We sh- we should be you know definitely pounding the streets from here on out. And I am I am just really really excited to see. What is going to come of this Mike and Mike man hour over here in the next few months? We are fine tuning a few things here. We 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 we, we might be adding in a, a uh, another co-host, so or a, sorry, a guest co co-host. And just to break it down for you, for you guys, so here on Fridays, you know, we're obviously gonna, we're obviously going to do the NFL pickums. Monday, we're going to preview the Monday night game. Tuesdays, we have what the hell or what the. Wednesdays we have Mike thoughts and then Thursday it's it starts all over again we 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 break down the Thursday night. so guys be prepared be ready for some Mike and Mike man hour going the full hour hopefully from here on out but with all that being said guys welcome to the show definitely share the live feed subscribe to the show, uh to, to the YouTube channel we are giving a giveaway over there all next week we're giving we're giving away three hoodies next week so be sure to head over to the YouTube channel you have to be a subscriber on there. And then, you know, once the giveaway comes up, you have to, you know, say, hey, uh, hashtag, I, I believe we're going to probably keep on man hour, hashtag man hour. But you never know. You just have to go over there and check it out and enter it when you can. But just remember, you have to be a subscriber to that YouTube channel to win that hoodie. And Jameson, thank you for your thoughts, man. It's 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 it was, it's definitely been a been a rough couple of days here. But with what with all that being 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 said, let's go ahead make this full circle here back to what we were talking about earlier. And I'm going to put this out there, guys. We witnessed the worst two quarterbacks in the starting in all of NFL last night, Gardner Mishu, Ryan Fitz, 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 Fitzpatrick. And the game was a good game. I mean, I, I, I had to give it to the Miami Dolphins. They are, I believe they're all underneath 30 years of age, except for the quarterback with Ryan Fitzpatrick, like what, 37 or 36 or something to that effect. But the Miami Dolphins are a young, hungry team. They're going to be good for years to come. I mean, they have built a nucleus, a young nucleus. The only thing they're missing is a quarterback. Oh, wait, they got Tua. They drafted Tua, right? Uh, guys, my, watch out for the Miami Dolphins for years to come. Not this year because they're still sold on this Ryan Fitz, Fitz, Fitzpatrick train. I mean, yes, he. I believe he completed the first 11 passes that he uh, threw last night, which was awesome, you know. I, I I believe they said that was the first time he ever done that in his career. Well, con- congratulations, my man! But you you only threw for 160 yards last night. I mean, this was not a uh, like if you like defense, this was a game to watch. But if you guys hear the helicopters flying over, that's because freaking Louisville is like getting burnt to the ground. So, uh, I'm in, I'm interested depending on what time you do it. Uh, Jameson, I'm not sure what you're talking about, um, but the man hour was is uh, live 1 p.m. East Coast time, Monday through Friday. But like, with that being said, guys, if you like defense from Thursday night, this was the game to watch. I mean, it was it was it was, it was kind of a, a defensive battle. Yes, the Miami Dolphins did score 31 points, and Fitz, Fitzpatrick did throw for two touchdowns. But look at the stats: 160 yards passing, 66 yards rushing on 22 carries. That's plus plus what three three yards a carry or whatever. Give, give, I can't do that at the top of my head and. And Parker for five seconds for sixty nine yards. I mean, it's just this was this this was not a a offensive power house type score, or whatever. But nonetheless, Thursday night games suck anyways. Uh, and I did get this pick wrong. I did pick the Jacksonville Jaguars to to win this game simply because they were the home home team, and I liked what they did against the uh, Colts in Week One, and I really thought they could carry some momentum maybe, but. My Miami Dolphins might be the real deal, so I am so far 0-1 in week number three. And we are going to be doing some more week three picks as we come back right after the break. Guys, this is the Mike and Mike Man Hour live, raw, uncut sports talk. We 
and welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. I know we're having some difficult difficulties on the old Facebook page there, and uh, it's 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 them. It's it is not us, unfortunately, this time around. But if you head over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mike and Mike Man Hour, that stream is working perfectly fine over there. But with all that being being said, being said, guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, to break it down, Miami Dolphins did win last night, thirty-one to what was it? thirty-one to thirteen was the final score. And now it it is time to give us some breakdowns, to give us some some uh, some some pickums for Week Three in the NFL season. The first game we're going to break down is the Chicago Bears at the Atlanta Falcons. As you guys know, the Atlanta Falcons gave up a twenty-three point lead last week to the Dallas Cowboys, ultimately losing forty to thirty-nine in a onside kick, uh, which was heard around the. Uh, I, I I said fire Dan Quinn after that onside kick happened because that was absolutely ridiculous. And the Chicago Bears, you know, they are kind of of a surprise, I believe. Uh, let me check to make sure. I believe they are 2-0. Two, two and oh. They had a huge, uh, what was it, 17-point uh, comeback win versus the Lions week one. And then last week they played a struggling uh, New York Giants team. But they they, they are 2-0 and oh right now. The Atlanta Falcons are 0-2. Oh, oh with that, with with all that being said, the Falcons, you know, they are kind of of the kind of of a best case zero and two team out there. I mean, yes, they did give up a twenty three point point lead. Yes, they struggled week one, but I think this week Atlanta. Let me write that down. Atlanta beats the Chicago Bears this week. There, there is a three point spread. So they are giving the Falcons a three point lead here. So if I'm a betting man, which sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, depending on the situation, I am taking the uh, take taking the Atlanta Falcons plus the points in this game. So give me the Falcons. Give me the dirty birds. I expect Julio Jones to score quite a few touchdowns this week. I'm calling for two touchdowns from Julio Jones and and Matt and Matt Ryan throws for four touchdowns in this game, kind of exposing the Chicago Bears. Moving on to the next game, we have the L.A. Rams taking on the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo, New York. Ooh, the Buffalo Bills, you know, I, I I called it earlier in the season. They are a sleeper team. I mean, I, I, I picked them to win the uh, AFC East, and they are holding true to their side. They are 2-0 and on the season so far. However, I did not anticipate the uh, Los Angeles Rams being at, looking as good as they do as of right now. Right now, they are two and zero going into week number three, and I had them going what five and eleven, I believe it was four and twelve. I can't remember for sure, but it was a four to five one se- season, and this surprises the crap out of me, and it almost kind of scares me a little bit because the Rams are the type of offense. You know, a couple years ago, you you guys saw them; they they went toe to toe with the Kansas City Chiefs, and the final score was what fifty six fifty nine or whatever it was. A absolutely crazy game there and it just it, it just it it blows my mind away that the Rams took a step back they subtracted to add more to be where they're at right now it is a two-point spread so it, if you are playing this playing 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 the spread either way I would take the points one way or the other because I do think the Buffalo Bills come out on on top because they are at at home and they're going to win by seven so the Bills are favored by two so I'm taking the Bills plus the points because I think the Bills win 28 to 21 is the final score in that one. LA drops a two and a one, and the Bills triumph to three and zero on the season. The next game up, you have the Washington Football Team traveling to Cleveland, Ohio, to take on the Cleveland Browns. Odell Beckham Jr. finally found the end zone last Thursday night, and there has been controversy swirling around this guy basically since the start of that Thursday night game, saying. Should they trade him? Should they not? And the Browns are still, the Browns are adamant, saying, "Hey, we are not going to trade him. We have no interest of, of like trading him whatsoever." But after this week, I think all those talks are going to get ramped back up again because I think the Washington Football Team is going to go into Cleveland and they are going to goose egg the Browns, as in shut them out, zero points on the board, and they're going to win fourteen to zero. The Washington Football Team they are a very very good defense. They might be one of the top five defenses in that 
league or in the NFL period. I mean, they added Chase Young. They they, they already had a solid front seven, and then you add a second round draft pick and or second the second overall pick and Chase Young to that team. I mean, this is week three. Things are starting to slow down for those rookies. Things are starting to click. You're like, you know what? That guy is it, it, it isn't as fast as I thought he was week one. And the Cleveland Browns. Let's let's just be uh, let's just be honest. They are a sinking ship right now. They lose this game. You are looking at a two and fourteen Cleveland Browns team and blowing up the ship. Trading Odell Beckham Jr. Trading Chubb. Uh, probably getting pro- probably benching Baker Mayfield by week five. I mean, this is the game that is going to ultimately start sinking that Cleveland Browns ship. And the Washington Redskins win this game, fourteen to zero. Shutting out the Cle- Cle- the Cleveland Browns, the Browns are favored by seven in this in this game. So I'm taking Washington plus the points because you know what? I can, I can. So put put money on the Washington Redskins. This week, this is my upset special of the week. Washington Redskins, or sorry, Washington football team beating the over rated Cleveland Browns. Next up, Tennessee Titans traveling to Minnesota. I have been on this Minnesota crap train. For a while, I told you guys they were going. They were a four to five win team, and right now they're proving it. They're zero and two going into week three. Tennessee Titans are two and zero. Tennessee Titans are a habitual eight and eight team. You are not going to see them get any better than eight and eight this season, just because. Let's just be honest. That's just the way it is. That is just the way it is. Jamison is picking Falcons over the Bears as like a like as well. But like I said, the Minnesota Vikings are going to get four to five wins this season. And this is one of them. I am picking Minnesota at home over the Tennessee Titans. You know, uh, what is uh, old uh, Brandon Coombs call, the, call uh, uh, Henry from the Triple Shot Shot Sports? Um, what does he call him? King Henry. King Henry is going to be Queen Henry this, this, this game. Getting shut down, unfortunately. 50, 60 yards tops. Kirk Cousins shows up. That, 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 uh, that uh, Vikings... Defense or the, the Vikings offense starts to click really, really well. Kurt Cuttons goes off uh, 350 yards, 400 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. And I look for Thielen to probably be the main threat this week or main uh, receiver this week. Uh, 14 catches. So it is a two and a half, half point favorite for the uh, Tennessee Titans. So I'm taking the Vikings, uh, you know, with the points because that's the way I do it around here. Next up, you have the Vegas Raiders, the highly, highly underrated Vegas Raiders, I might add, taking on the, the New England Patriots, traveling to New, New England. Vegas is 2-0. and Patriots are 1-0, coming off a uh, basically a last-second loss to the Seattle Seahawks, 35-0. to uh, Was that Sunday Night Football last week? Patriots are favored by 5.5 in this game. This is one of those games where you have to pick the home home, home team. Since traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast on a 1 o'clock game, their bodies are going to be, what, 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm not for sure what Vegas, what what uh, what uh, time zone Vegas really falls underneath there. But either way, Patriots win this game. You aren't going to be wowed by the stats. This is, this is, this is going to be kind of one of those sloppy games where, you know, just just – just, just things just don't, you know, people forget to show up. This is just one of those sloppy games. Cam Newton does his thing, 100 and let, – let's, let's give him 200 yards in this game. Uh, Edelman probably gets, you know, 80 to 85 yards receiving, and Jacobs probably runs for like 100 yards. You know, those are going to probably be your stat leaders. But the Patriots win. They win, let's say, 17 to 13. It is a five-and-a-half-point spread. So I'm picking the Patriots to win outright, but the Raiders... Uh, so I, I'm picking the Patriots to win outright, but I'm picking the Raiders with the points to beat the Patriots in the spread. 17-13, Patriots win this game. Moving on to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Load, please, load, please. You have San Francisco 49ers taking on the New York football Giants. I don't know if San Francisco flew home or not, to maybe get some home cooking to have their mommy rub their wounds. But the 49ers are a struggling team right now. Unfortunately, the Viking or the uh uh 49ers, they are out there 
starting running back. They're out there starting quarterback. They're out there starting defensive end. They're starting. They're out there starting linebacker, starting cornerback, starting receiver. At this point, they are having Danley uh, Junior College start uh, start bringing in some kids to play for them because they are they are so struggling. As on on the opposite side, look at the New York Giants. They lost Shake Shake Home Barkley for the season with the ACL injury. But with but with all those injuries adding up, those injuries hurt the 49ers more than this Shake Home Barkley injury hurts the Giants. The Shaquan Barkley injury for the New York Giants will make the Giants better in the end. It gives Daniel Jones some time to throw the freaking foot 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 football. Let's be honest. There is there was there's what seven to eight guys in the box every freaking play. Teams don't teams no longer have to put seven to eight guys in it like in the box anymore because there's not Shaquan Barkley to stop. Daniel Jones is going to have some time to throw the ball with you know Bosa's out right. I don't know who the Giants' backup running back is, but he's going to have 100 yards. If you don't have him on fantasy, you probably should if you're looking for a replacement for Traycon Barkley. Well, with that being said, the Giants win this game. They are they are a three-and-a-half-point underdog, so they are winning outright. I'm taking the Giants to beat the, Vic- uh, to beat the 49ers. 49ers drop to 1-2 and two on the season. The Giants get their first win of the season, bump them to 1-2 and two on the day on the week, on the year, whatever it is right now. Next up, you have Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to take on the Eagles. The Eagles, the Eagles, the Eagles. What are the Eagles like at this point? Are they tanking for some wide receivers for some offensive linemen? Are they still battling for that division? Think they think they're going to win, win the division? Either way, both teams are 0-2 going into week three. Both have uh, one home loss as well, so obviously one road loss. Home loss and lower road loss, so 0-2, whatever. But this is a game that Joe Burrow starts to come out of the... I mean, Joe Burrow has had a pretty good couple games so so, so far. I, I believe he has right around 500 yards throwing uh, this season with three touchdowns and I think two interceptions, if I'm not mistaken, maybe one. I can't 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 remember that Thursday night game. It's such a blur. I hate Thursday night night games. But with that being said, this game is going to be a very very good game. It is going to come down to the third quarter, not the first quarter, not the second, not 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 the fourth, not the last play of the game. It's coming come down to the third quarter. Whoever has the ball burst first in the third quarter and scores first in the third quarter is going to win this game. Football is a game of momentum. It is a game of traction and b- the ball just bouncing right one 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 way right more than it does wrong. And whoever comes out at halftime, scores the ball first, is going to win this game. The Philadelphia Eagles are a five-point favorite in this game, but I am ticking another upset. I don't have faith in the Eagles whatsoever. I think Carson Wentz after this week is done. And you see Jaden Hurt come, and he has been acclimated. Uh, you know, he he's been playing like in this game or been practicing and whatnot. This is the game that the Philadelphia Eagles ship sinks. They're sitting, they're benching Carson Wentz after this game. Jalen Hurt is coming in after this game. Joe freaking Burrow gets his first win versus <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles. That's just the way it is. Cincinnati is going to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. And like I said, it's 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 going to come down to the first score in the third quarter. Whoever comes out in halftime, I'm hoping it's Cincinnati, but it is going to be a thirteen to ten win for the Cincinnati Bengals. Next up, you have the Houston Texans taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers are kind of of a surprise. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I mean, I think I had them going nine and six. I want to say, or uh, sorry, nine and seven. I should. I should. Should. Should say. And I had the Houston Texans uh, going as same same as well. Houston Texans have been historically, they have started slow. I mean, look at their schedule that they've had. They 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 they've had the uh, they've had the Chiefs, they had the Ravens, and now they have the Steelers. And you know, yes, they they've been kind of ugly ass wins or losses, I should say, kind of lopsided. And the Pittsburgh Steelers have had some ugly wins as well. But uh, with that being said. 
this game is falling into Pittsburgh's hands. Uh, I mean, Houston Texans are kind of lick, licking their wounds over those first two ass kickings that they got. And Pittsburgh Steelers, are, they're, they're kind of riding high a little bit. Jameson, you are wrong on the Browns versus the uh, Washington there, but it is what it is, man. We'll, we'll, we'll let it slide this, this time. But I, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers go 3-0 and on the season, beating the Houston Texans. And it's, it's going to be a, another close game for the Steelers, much like that uh, Broncos game was. Uh, so let's say 21-20 to is the final score. Steelers on top. The Steelers are a four-point favorite, so if you're betting against the spread and you're going with my picks, you should pick the Houston Texans with the points to beat the uh, Steelers. But I, I, I'm picking the Steelers to win outright. Uh, four-point favorite in, in that game. Moving on to the next one here, we have the New York football Jets taking on the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's pretty close to my hometown now. Pretty awesome. If I was able to get tickets to this game, I wouldn't go. I mean, who? I mean, let's let's be honest. Who really wants to watch the the New York Jets right now? Any like, anyways, this spread is very very big spread. The Colts are favored by eleven and a half points in this game. With that being said, I, as a betting man, I am not picking this game whatsoever. Vegas is trying to trap me in this game one hundred percent to pick to to. Hit the, to pick the Jets with the points. Uh, I mean, 11 and a half points is a lot of points. Pretty much anything over seven in the NFL, I think, is a lot of points to really give a team one way or the other. And they got 11 and a half points. Now, I am picking Indianapolis Colts to win this game. I have faith in the Colts. I still think they're going to go 10 and 6, even though they struggle against week one versus Jacksonville. Was it Jacksonville or the Panthers? Either way, J- Jacksonville. And they look kind of suspect at, like, at times last week, I like as well. But I am picking the Indianapolis Colts, and you know what? I'm going to give the Jets the points. Everything that I just said, throw throw it out the window. Follow it up, throw it throw it out the window. I am taking the Colts, and I'm giving the Jets the the eleven and a half points. Why not? The Colts are going to win, um, thirty five to seven. Now let's 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 give it a little bit more consider. Let's give them thirty five sixteen is the final. So with that 11 and a half points, they cover. Colts win, moving in them two and one on the season and bumping the Jets back to 0 and 3. Oh, I wonder if Le'Veon Bell is starting to really question his thoughts now of really switch, switch, switching teams like at this point. Next up, we have the Carolina Panthers taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. I was on a show, well, I think it was Sunday when I was with uh, Brandon Coombs on Triple Shot Sports, and they had professional. That's right. Professor Leonard is his name. And Professor Leonard told me, or was I can't can't remember who exactly told me, but let me let me let me let me, let me close that. There we go. They said that the Chargers are the most underrated team in all of the NFL. And I would concur with, concur with that a little bit, except for the fact that they probably play in one of the toughest divisions in the NFL right now. Unfortunately, yes, that NFC West division is looking much tougher now. Yes, we had them peg as the toughest division of all of football with the Rams being below and then the 49ers and then the Cardinals and then the Seahawks. But at the same time, the Rams have stepped up. The 49ers are maybe taking two steps back instead of the one step back that I first initially thought. You can call it injuries or want, but either way, the 49ers were going to fail this season big time. The Chargers are a quarterback, a quarterback away to being. Is it a great team or a really, really good team? Either way, they're right there on the cusp. They're a quarterback of way of being a semi-great team. Let's call it what it is: semi-great, great team. And I see a poll come across the YouTube channel, guys. I forgot to change that. My bad. Uh, sorry about that. So if you're voting on that, I mean everybody should be voting for the Raiders, right? <laughs> but. With uh, Tyron Taylor getting a punctured lung for a shot that was malfunctioned, or I, I, the reports that I'm reading are are, are kind of sus, are kind of suspect, he was getting a shot in his chest that punctured his lung. If you're already getting shots by week two, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? God damn, man, shit. Yes, I know football is a rough sport. I've I've had pl- plenty of shots. I I 
ice baths, heat baths, whatever you want to call it. it. Yes, but week two, come on, man. Week, th- I mean, week four and on is probably when all that shit starts happening. Week two, come on, something's probably wrong. But the Chargers have a quarterback right now. The guy that played for them last week, their future right there, he is going to start this week versus the Carolina Panthers, an ailing Carolina Panthers without Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I, I believe I've heard reports out for several weeks, whatever the hell that, that means. And then I saw that he was on the IR. So I believe he's out till at least week eight. So, I mean, that's at least, what, four, five, five more weeks, whatever it, come, it comes down to. I want to pick the Chargers at home versus the Carolina Panthers, but I, I just I, I don't know if I'm there yet. It's a six-and-a-half point spread. So against the spread, I'm picking the Panthers one way or the other. But the outright win, I've been going back and forth. Do the Panthers get their first win on the road? Does Matt Rule get his first win on the road? Versus a, a fairly good Chargers team, good defense, good offense, minus the quarter, 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 quarterback. Only time will tell of how the quarterback comes out and, and, and plays. Oh, shit. Does a rookie quarterback get his first win, or does a rookie coach get his first win? Give me the Chargers. Give me the Chargers. L.A. Chargers. I, I wrote it down. L, L.A.C. right there. Like I said, I'm already picking the Panthers with the points because it is a six and a half, half, like half point spread. So the score I'm going to give you guys will be 13 to 10. Chargers win 13 to 10, but the Panthers cover. So if you guys are betting odds, point, point, point spreads, definitely pick the Panthers in this game. Next up, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Denver Broncos at Mile High Stadium. Flashing back earlier to uh, when we were picking these games with with the uh, Tom Brady and whatnot, I had the Broncos winning this game. I didn't think the Buccaneers would have everything in in place yet. I think the, I thought the Broncos were going to be clicking. However, the Broncos lost their starting quarterback. They signed Blake Bortles as a backup quarterback. They lost uh, Cortland Sutherland for the for the year as well, and uh, uh, Lindsey, the running back, they lost him for a couple weeks as well. I I don't think he is going to play either. With with that being said, and the way that Tampa Bay looked last week versus Car- Carolina, they have showed a little bit more pro- more progression than I thought they were by week three. So I'm I'm picking the Buccaneers simply because the Broncos is a battered offense right now. They lost their receiver, they lost their quarterback, and they lost their running back as well. That defense is is still good, but they are still looking for that void in Devon Miller for uh what he t- he. Separated Achilles, or I can't remember exactly what he did. No, it's a, it was a pectoral muscle, I think, what Vaughn Miller did. But either way, Tampa Bay wins. Five and a half point favorite in this game for the Buccaneers. I think they cover. I think the final score is going to be 28 to 14. Tampa Bay wins at Mile High Stadium, putting them to two and one on the season. Whew, next up, next up, next up, the Battle of the Ties, right? Last season, Detroit Lions taking on the much improved Arizona Cardinals. If you guys listen to the man hour and listen to stuff that's saying, I've been dropping you knowledge ever since July on the Mike and Mike man hour. You guys should understand that. I've told you the Arizona cards were going to be this good. I told you that Kyler Murray's going to have an MVP caliber season. I told you that Hopkins was going to put a Kyler Murray into that MVP into the elite status of the league. I've also told you that Detroit Lions are going to go 10 and six this season. Yes, they blew a 17 point 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 lead versus the Bears. Yes, they blew a 20 or was it a 14 or 21 point lead versus the Packers. The Packers are really fucking good. Do 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 not get that twisted whatsoever. The Packers are really really good. However, the Detroit Lions are still just as good. They're still going to go 10 and 6 on the season. I still have faith in Matthew Stafford. He has thrown for damn near 600 yards this season, but however, those interceptions are creeping up on him a little bit. I think he has 3 this year. However, this is the game that the Detroit Lions really, really, really get Adrian Peterson involved into the running game even more. This is the same offensive coordinator that Adrian Peterson had in Minnesota from, was it 2007 to 2011 when he had, was it 5,000 5, yards in those four CC seasons? Absolutely remarkable time, right? This is a game. I'm going to pick another ups, uh, upset. This is my third upset that I'm picking 
this week. The Cardinals are favored by five and a half points this week. So if you want to give me the points, awesome. But I think the Detroit Lions are going to go into Arizona. Cardinals are overlooking them a little bit. I mean, why not? I mean, shit. The De- are the Detroit Lions the next Atlanta Falcons giving up all these freaking points, like all these big leads? Think about it. Last year when they played the Arizona Cardinals, they were up by 28 points going into halftime. If, if I'm not mistaken, that game ended up in a 35-35 tie. They gave up a 17-point lead versus the Bears, 21-point lead versus the Packers. They're going to get another 21-point lead in this game. They're going to give it up, but they're going to fight back, and the final score is going to be 35-33. to Lions win in this game, 35-30 B, beating the future MVP, Kyler Murray, and playoff-bound Atlanta Falcons. Mark those down. Now, quite possibly one of the games of the week here, you can call it a primetime 425 game here, you have the Dallas Cowboys, fresh off that amazing comeback win or the Atlanta loss, whatever you want to call it, taking on the Seattle Seahawks, which they put away a very good Patriots team Last week, 35-30 to 30 with a goal line stop. Cowboys are 1-1 one one this season. The Seahawks are 2-0. Oh. Oof. This, 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 this game has trap written all over it. I'm talking about trap for the Seattle Seahawks. Because the Dallas Cowboys are riding high, right? And they're going to come in their hype. You, you are, you, you're going to see people talking about, hey, Dallas Cowboys are Super Bowl champions. They're going Super Bowl, yada, yada, yada. I've heard it. I've seen it. Dak Prescott's thrown for 700 plus yards in the season, two touchdowns. Russell Wilson, you know, nine, not nine touchdowns through the air. <laughs> this is the game where you're going to have to sit back, and it's it's going to be boring. That's just the way it is. This game is going to be boring. We've seen Cowboys score 40 points last week. We've seen. Seattle Seahawks scored 35 points the week before that. This is a game where everything starts crushing back down to reality. We're, we, we are not going to get a 45 to 30 game or a 55 to 56 point game. It's just, it's just not, it's not, 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 not going to happen. The, the Seattle Seahawks have a pretty good defense still. The Cowboys, like, like I said, they have a top 10 defense dating back to last year. They added some pieces. Yes, they let go of, they, uh, Somebody got hurt. Kim, uh, uh, oh, Vanderish got hurt, uh, broken collarbone. But I, I still have faith in this Dallas Cowboys defense, and I have faith that they're going to corral Russell Wilson. How do you beat Russell Wilson? Make him one dimensional. You know, you. Uh, so I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to take away the passing game. They're going to make them run the ball. If you do not see Chris Carson have twenty plus carries in this game. Something is wrong for the Dallas Cowboys defense, and it's probably going to be a high-scoring game. But I think Chris Carson is going to have 20-plus carries. Zeke is going to have probably 25-plus carries. This is going to be a ground-and-pound game. This game is going to be over in two hours tops. Two hours tops. Final score is going to be 17-14. to 14. Seattle Seahawks do come out on, on top. Yes, I'm, I am picking against my closet team, the Dallas Cow- Cowboys. But unfortunately, I think the Seahawks are better than the Cowboys right now. That is just the way it is. Then we come down to the Sunday night football game. If you guys remember me talking this back in June or July, I was trying to get tickets to this game. And unfortunately, you cannot get tickets to any football game right right now. They're only allowing like 2,000 people in, into the stands. Hell, there's more people at our freaking high school games than, are the, than the NFL games right now. It's absolutely stupid. But... We had the Green Bay Packers, Aaron freaking Rodgers, 2-0, taking on the 1-1 New Orleans Saints at the Metrodrome. Or not, what, the Mercedes, what is it called? What is it called now? Mercedes-Benz is in Atlanta. Metrodrome is in Minneapolis. What is it called now? Mm, I thought it was called the Mercedes, I don't know. Either way, the Big Easy, right? New Orleans Saints are a three-point favorite in this game. That is is a head scratcher to me. We saw what the Green Bay Packers did against the, 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 the Detroit Lions. 42 points. Pretty much, was it 42 unanswered points? Because I believe, I'm pretty sure the Cow- or the Lions were up 21-0, if I'm not mistaken. It was definitely, I mean, it, 
I, 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 let's, let's go roll with it. 4,200 unanswered points. Yes, the New Orleans Saints did come back against the Seahawks. Se- 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 I'm sorry. I lied. Did not play the Seahawks. Who did New Orleans play last week and lose to? Uh, Vegas R- 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 Raiders. Yes, they looked great in the first quarter. My mom was slipping there for a second. I had a had a little brain fart. My 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 bad guys. But New Orleans Saints are going to lose at home to the Green Bay Packers. Aaron freaking Rodgers is on a, on a mission. You guys remember the Packers went thirteen and three last season, right? They went to the NFC Championship game last season. They haven't lost anything. If anything, they added a couple pieces. They added more depth at quarterback. They added some depth to the defensive side. Yes, their receiver core is still, quote, lacking, but still probably a top seven, top eight receiving core in all of football. Michael Thomas is probably injured. I mean, he does have the eye ankle sprain. He is questionable for or day-to-day, as they say. When this first happened, I heard he was going to be out two to three weeks, and now he's playing. I don't, I don't think so. There, there is no way you come back from a sprain ankle that freaking fast. Give me the Green Bay Packers on the road, beating the New Orleans Saints 20, 30 to 27 is the final score. So if you are a betting man, Packers win because the Saints are favored by three. And I had the Packers winning by three. So therefore, there's a six point spread. You understand what I'm saying? You get it. You get it. Well, guys, this is Mike and Mike Man Hour. We will be right back. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckhuis are here live, raw, and uncut sports talk coming at you Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. East Coast time, right here on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mike and Mike Man Hour. If you're not a YouTube connoisseur, we're also on Facebook as well. Search Mike and Mike Man Hour. If you have missed any part of the show whatsoever, we are on Spotify, iTunes, and iHeartRadio as well. Download the podcast, Mike and Mike Man Hour. As soon as this is this 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 live feed is over, it processes and it gets up there on the podcast form. So, I personally like listening to podcasts on the car on the way to football practice or home. It just like I kind of want to listen to all the news that's happening in the world. I could I could care less right now. However, if you want to listen to 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 some to some news, my man Joel Campbell, I saw him pop up in the chat here. What is up, Joel? If you're still watching. He has a YouTube channel as well called The Bearded Truth. This this this, this guy jumps into all the Breonna Taylor stuff, all all into the um the Kenosha shootings and political, and I believe he's he's running for a political office over there in Kansas as well, like as well. So if you guys are watching from Kansas, be sure to uh, you know vote vote for Joel, my high school classmate, one of my good 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 friends from high school there. So Joel, what is up, man? Hopefully you're having a good time in. Uh, I am subscribed to his YouTube channel, and that's that. That that's I've been watching his YouTube channel now for a couple three 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 weeks now, and I love every, like every time he puts out a episode. So definitely shout out to the Bearded Truth on the YouTube channel, guys. Check it out, Bearded Truth, my man Joel Campbell over there. Go over there, give him a subscribe and a like if you would. That would that would definitely make my day. And put hashtag Man Hour in his comments just so people know he came from the Man Hour. I'm giving my man shout out for free, but hey, good luck on the like over, like over, over there, Joel. But guys, it is time for the two minute warning. That'll bring us to the two minute warning. And on today's two two minute warning, normally we try to keep it lighthearted, kind of comical, kind of like ha ha funny or a hee hee funny, whatever you're into. But as of late, guys, I have been going through a lot of. I guess turmoil in my life, you know, there's there's been a death in the family, uh, and sometimes I, I I tweeted this out on Twitter at mbuck41. If you guys are interested, in following me there on the Twitter, I, I need to be more active on there. But go over to Mike and Mike Man Hour. Mike Man Hour is the Twitter handle for the show. 
were a lot more active on that on that one. But some of the easiest things in the world to do for a spouse, a friend, or whoever is going through a difficult time is just to be be there. That's all you gotta do is simply just be there, sit next to them, put your phone away for an hour, right? Just sit there and be with them, hold their hand, rub their shoulder, whatever. But you know what else is the hardest thing in the world? It's also just to be there. I mean, it is. It, 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 sometimes it is. It, it is hard. Like we get so accustomed to just holding our phones and playing games, or throwing through Facebook or Twitter or whatever you scroll through Instagram, YouTube. Sometimes it is simply just hard to.